to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. We confess, Heavenly Father, that we have not loved you with all that we are and have. We have failed to love others as ourselves. Forgive us. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. We confess that we have allowed the world's opposition to bind us for the truth of your forgiving love. At times we have set our hope in Christ aside. Forgive us. Beloved, we are now God's children, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like Jesus, because we shall see him as he is. We, we confess that we have obsessed about the present moment, losing sight of your eternal glory and abiding presence. Forgive us. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. We confess that our thoughts, words, and deeds have not been pure. At times we wallow in hopelessness without contrite hearts. Forgive us. The Lord hears our repentant confession. By his grace, you and I are declared the children of God for the sake of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as a call ordained servant of Christ, by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On top of page three, there's a prayer. O Almighty God, you have so lovingly baptized us into the one holy church. You have fed us at the Lord's table, even as you have nourished all the body of Christ. We give you humble and hearty thanks for all your servants who have finished their work in faith and now rest from their labors. Give Grant us grace to follow your saints of old in all virtues of God we live in. Keep us in one true faith that together with all your saints we may sing your praises in heaven. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And there from page three, uh, Carl's going to lead us in this reading from uh, St. John's Book of Revelation. Let's stand, friends, honoring <coughs> Jesus' words as he speaks to us these uh, beautiful Beatitudes, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him, 
and he began to teach them. Blessed are those who recognize they are spiritually helpless. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn. They will be comforted. Blessed are those who are gentle. They will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for God's approval. They will be satisfied. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be treated mercifully. Blessed are those whose thoughts are pure. They will see God. Blessed are those who make peace. They will be called God's children. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what God approves of. The, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Yes, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, lie and say all kinds of evil things about you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven. The prophets who lived before you were persecuted in these ways. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, friends. I'm going to skip that uh, poetic uh, rendering of the creed there as uh, we're going to be focusing tonight on Jesus' Beatitudes. And as I was preparing this message, I, I couldn't help but remembering it. it was a little bit more than three years ago when I got to go to the Jewish Federation um, to Israel. And one place they'd like to take you is to, you know, the Sermon on the Mount <laughs> begins with these beautiful eight blessings, these Beatitudes that Jesus speaks. And uh, they like to take you to what they think was that site. So there you are, climbing, you know, up into the hills of Judea. And then as you come down on the other side, I know you can't see it, but just describe it. It's, uh, it's, it's more beautiful than Lake Michigan, if you can believe it. Because <laughs> you've just got, you know, this, this, this um, Lake Galilee ringed by these hills. Israel on this side, and, and uh, the land we call Jordan on the far side, and the Jordan River coming out of the southern end of it. And up towards the northern end there is, um, you know, these hills just coming down to, this, to the, uh, the big lake there. And you can kind of imagine as, as, as the hills come down in different folds at places, you have what becomes like a natural amphitheater, almost like a bowl scooped out there on the shore side. So with this other picture, we're down on the shore and like looking up the hill, real tiny, I know you can't see it, but there's a, a, a church at the top of that hill. And it's really exciting to go there because as you go, this place, this hillside, is just covered with people from all over the world. Here's a group, I think they were from uh, somewhere in Southeast Asia, maybe uh, Vietnam, um, celebrating their Lord's Supper there on the side of the mount. This is a, uh, a great bliss, a great blessing that Jesus speaks to us. He talks about the helpless poor, those who grieve. The third one, those who are gentle even when oppressed. And then the fourth one, those who have gut hunger. But see, then I start listening to Jesus' words and going, this does not sound fun. <laughs> Those are really people that have been put in a very difficult place. Do I really want to sign up for that? And then Jesus speaks four more blessings. Those who show mercy and are pure and make peace. Those who do what God calls right. And uh, these are all good things, but they're not easy to do. Things that I often have failed. And so I'm saying, this is, this is, these are blessing words? I mean, on the one hand, you've got people that had bad stuff happen to them. And on the other hand, you've got people that have worked really hard to do good stuff and still often get kicked in the teeth. Where's the blessing? So as I'm going up to this uh, beautiful Mount of Beatitudes, you're walking down the sidewalk to get there, and there's this sign, which struck me as really fun when I got there. It says, these are the Beatitudes uh, put forward by the sisters who run the place. No dogs, no shorts, no loud talking, no drinks, no guns, and no smoking. You better not, you better not, you better not. <laughs> a bunch of commandments. And it struck me as appropriate because sometimes when I hear these Beatitudes, I hear them all wrong. Moses long ago went up a mountain and God gave him these ten commandments saying, Thou shalt, and thou shalt not. And sometimes we want to teach Jesus as if he's a new Moses. Is that what this is about? You better be good? In fact, it's the opposite. What Jesus is describing here is how good is God? 
He is all good, this God who desires to bless you. I miss the main word when I don't hear that. It's God giving you a blessing, giving you this joy deep in your heart. We can't make Jesus like Moses, some sort of lawgiver. Jesus is so different from this one who's sent by God to give us rules. Jesus is God himself. Here's God in the flesh who has come to do the thing that Moses told us to do when we always fail. Here's God in the flesh come to love us, to give us the blessing. So the main thing about understanding Jesus' Beatitudes is the main thing about any religious place. You go inside the church there, and of course, what do you find at the very heart of it? <laughs> it's always about this God who loves to give himself for you. It's all about the cross. You're not going to hear the blessing unless you hear it coming from the man who took up the cross, this great God who has risen again to give you a gift beyond your deserving, the resurrected one who can turn even your troubles into a blessing. So, what the Beatitudes are all about becomes not a threat, you better be good, bad stuff's going to happen, but it's an encouragement Take hope in the great blessing of God. So this church on top of the hill that we're just inside of there in a moment, it's got this cupola with eight sides. Why eight sides? <laughs> eight Beatitudes, with each of them up there in, in a beautiful window. Encouraging us to have this great hope. That Jesus here is not come to beat us up as a sinner. He's come to bless us, to show us how we can live in a whole new way. In fact, how we can be more and more, we can be like a saint, the opposite of sinner. He's showing us how to live new. So as I'm taking this picture, I'm standing there and, and I look down at my feet and there's this beautiful mosaic there right under my feet. Back down in the uh, bottom left corner there, you can even see my shoe. <laughs> and it was really uh, this vine making this great big kind of a tree thing. And I looked, and, and they were all in triplicates. Here's Old Testament Melchizedek. Here's New Testament St. Paul. Here's, uh, in church history, another great bringer of peace, um, the old St. Catherine of Siena. Here's another example. All of these triplicates, one from the Old Testament. Here's um, Jacob. The one from church history is um, Monica, mother of Augustine. She was just a beggar. She only prayed God that her son would, uh, would become a Christian. Here's Peter. This, this one is all demonstrating um, blessed are the poor. These were poor people. Here's poor Peter. He's, he's heartbreaking. The, the uh, rooster is crowing, and he knows he's done wrong. Um, but Peter, cheer up. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. You now you're giving up on all your big braggadocio. Now you're going to have him, the kingdom of heaven. So we could hear these Beatitudes and we could look at the lives of the saints and say, who's going to show me the way? Who's going to teach me how to live like that? So that the Beatitudes aren't just words out there somewhere, but they actually become part of my life. What would be a great saint to look to? <laughs> and I thought, gee, that's kind of a dumb question. Because all of these saints, and the way they're put on this mosaic there under my feet, these are kind of like hanging there like they're the fruit on this great tree. Where did any of these people, where did, where did the great Christians in your life, I mean, maybe you learned the faith from a wonderful grandmother or, or a great father, I don't know, or a Sunday school teacher somewhere along the way, where did they get their faith? I mean, finally, all of the tree goes back to one root. It's all about who? kind of murky. I love these, these big old churches all over Israel. This one actually is not that same church on the Mount of Beatitudes. This, this is the church that is uh, at Jesus' uh, resurrection place. One of the great cupolas when you look up high. And you've got all these saints that are um, in the walls. It's like, in a, in a, here's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and another ring of these great saints there. But finally, <laughs> there at the center, at the very heights of heaven, is Jesus himself. 
So what I especially want to invite you to do tonight is hear these Beatitudes and realize that Jesus has not come to yell at you, and he's done even more than just come to tell you about a sweet new way to live. Jesus in these Beatitudes is telling you the very secret of his own heart. Jesus says, this is how I do it. Come on, follow me as I give myself to you. So let me get specific here instead of talking these generalities. First beatitude, blessed are those who recognize they are spiritually helpless. Recognize those who know that they are poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And I hear that and I say, hey, you're kidding me, Jesus. What bliss is there in being poor? And you're not just talking about an empty pocketbook. I mean, you're talking about poor in spirit, a very broken heart. Who wants that? But Jesus says, look at me. Who is so helpless as me? Think of it. I had all the riches, all the power, all the wisdom. I had all the glory. Everything was mine, and I left it to become a single cell in the womb of a virgin. All the treasures. I didn't want the riches. I said, Papa, let me be the one who is the poorest of the poor. All the way down. At the end, I called out and I said, Father, I am in your hands. I got nothing. I'm a beggar before you, Papa. Blessed are the spiritually helpless. I didn't come to help myself. I put down all of my defenses. But I was so blessed in that. Because right there is where I was the king. <laughs> this is where I opened the door to heaven. Blessed to follow me. Blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted. And I'm thinking, well, it's really nice to be comforted, but really if I had my choice, I would rather have no reason for grieving. Wouldn't you? But Jesus comes and he says, is that really an option in this world? It's not just at Lazarus' tomb where we see Jesus sobbing out loud. <laughs> Jesus looks and he says, all the sin, all the death I see, it's wrong. It makes me we. But this is my bliss. God sees my tears. God sends me, says Jesus, to be comfort to the world. These Beatitudes are his own heart. Blessed are the gentle. They shall inherit the earth. And, and again, I first hear that and I go, this, this is more just religious gobbledygook. I mean, we know how things are on this runaway earth. If you're gentle, you get run over. But Jesus says, come to me. You're weary, you're run down, I will give you rest. I am gentle. Same word. I am humble of heart. I am meek as a lamb. The very lamb of God come to the slaughter. This is my bliss. I, in my gentleness, get to give to you myself. And when you've got me, you know the world is yours. Everything. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for God's approval. They shall be satisfied. I have no joy working to win this world's approval, says Jesus. There's only one who I want to make happy. Let my Father be delighted in me. For the joy set before me, says Jesus, I endure that cross. For this is my joy, this is my bliss, that I get to rescue the world. And God seeing this great hunger in me. He will satisfy me. He will make me the one who gives bread to the world. 
all four of them. Recognize how helpless you are. Grieve with me. Walk gently with me, says Jesus. Hunger and thirst for God with me. And it's all yours. The kingdom, the comfort, the inheritance, the satisfaction, every bliss, every blessing I will give you, for I will give you myself. This is how I live. One more little close-up here. Because Jesus now tells us it's not only the way I live in you that brings such bliss. It's the very way that I shall live through you. Fifth beatitude, verse 7. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be treated mercifully. If I give people a break, Lord, they're going to take advantage of me. Jesus says, tell me about it. <laughs> Didn't you see how they piled on my back? How they gave me a cross? Show mercy. This is my bliss, that I get to show mercy to you. And as you receive my mercy, you've got more to share. Verse 8, blessed are those whose thoughts are pure. They shall see God. And we go, oh, no, 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 i got to pay attention. i got to see what my enemy is plotting against me. i got to be fierce and fight like the devil. i got to figure them out. <laughs> and Jesus says, really? Is that going to work? Is that going to get you out of this world alive? No one comes out of this world alive, says Jesus, except me. My only thought is, what does my Father want? And this is my bliss. Come with me. See God with me. Blessed are those who make peace. They shall be called God's children. Really? Like we're going to go into a war zone and play peacemaker? When there's trouble in the home or trouble at work? Trouble in the family? A peacemaker? They call them God's children? I thought they called them suckers. <laughs> they call them dead meat. And Jesus says, yes, just like me. The Prince of Peace. Fearlessly laying down my life. This is my bliss. I, God's one and only, I give you this new name. You, like me, are God's child. Blessing, blessing, blessing after blessing. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what God approves of. Back to where he started. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Do what God wants and people are going to applaud? Or they can come out to get you. But Jesus says, bliss, bliss, bliss is mine. I who endured the cross, I rescue you. I am resurrected. I live and I reign to give you my kingdom. This is your bliss. When you live, doing the right thing, even when it's hard. When you live like me and then you reign like me. You're ruling over the wickedness of this world. It doesn't intimidate you anymore. You reign. And you even have the opportunity to open the kingdom of heaven for the one God gives to you to influence. Blessing after blessing after blessing. Opportunities for us to hear Jesus' heart. Beating and beating and beating to bless and to bless and to bless and to bless again us. that we can live with him. O oh, blessed Lord Jesus, give to us faith in your cross. Give to us hope in your blessing. Especially, Lord, give to us this amazing love that we see in the Beatitudes, your picture, your portrait, and we are lifted up by your power to live new. We ask it in your name, Jesus.
Lord bless and keep you, friends, and all of his blessings. Now let me get my pictures out of the way as we uh, turn to prayers. Right in the middle of the bulletin here, it's on uh, page six. First, we're going to have a remembrance of those in our uh, family of faith. Before we do that, are there any um, other special prayers that you want to add this night? To, um... Please, Barbara. Um, my daughter's mother-in-law is passing away. Oh, I'm sorry. She needs to okay. So God's care on Jean. Any other friends? Let's stand as we turn to page six, please. <coughs> With God's people throughout his church, let us remember this day all those sinners whom Jesus summoned to himself in faith and by his forgiveness made his own saints. We were created by God to offer him praise forever. We were redeemed by Jesus, God's Son. We were filled with his Holy Spirit through baptism, where God gave to us eternal life. We have been nourished in the company of his people through the Lord's Supper and God's Word. So let us give thanks for those he has called home during the days of this last year. He has summoned them up out of his church here at spiritual warfare, up to his church triumphant above that they may continue in joyful service to him forever. In our family of faith, we remember Bill Everson, Lucille White, Ron Brueggemann, Nita Ball, Jenny Kilcheski, Bernie Peterson, Robert Brinker. Let us give God thanks for these and others for whom we grieve. Even as their bodies rest in the earth, their spirits today enjoy the heavenly crown God gave them in baptism. The Lord will 